Hello filmmakers, it's Carrie with Filmmaker Central. We got more lights to show you today. These new coal pars, super cool. Stay right there, we'll be right back. Uh, I'll admit, one of the coolest things about running this channel is being able to try out different technologies, different products, different tools, find things that are either great for budgets or they have some unique character to them or something that works really well. And this company, Colbar, Colbar uh, reached out and said, hey, would you like to try these lights out? And I don't take everything. I take the ones that I think are gonna be interesting. And these certainly fit the interesting category quite well. They're a 65 watt COB or, or chip on board uh, light that, you know, at first glance, you're like, okay, it's another light, but there's a bit more to it. And I have two of them here, which is what we're going to show. And when you open the box, you get what I have sitting right next to me. You have a carrying case. There we have it. Okay. So what makes these interesting? Well, let's get, let's unbox one and we'll take a look at what you get and you'll notice some things right off the top that are different than a lot of other lights out there. Not saying that they're, these are the best yet or anything, but we need to take a look and see what we actually have. So here's the light itself, the CL60. It's got a little rubberized cover on the front. It's got a little protective, uh, Thing on the front of this one. Take that off real quick. There we go. So you can see the chip on here. It's a nice size chip. Lots of cooling on here. Lots of vents. Kind of a nice uh, metal finish on here. Build quality on this thing feels really, really nice. So first glance, first impressions, it's kind of cool. I'm going to make some room here. So yeah, right off the top, kind of neat. But then when you take a look at it, you notice that there's two mounting rails, I guess you would say, on the side that I would call these male. And on the top and the bottom, you have female. So that's gonna play into some stuff here in a few moments. You have a little instruction manual. You have a small little reflector. Pretty small. I mean, compared to most Bowen mounts ones are going to be much bigger. You have a standard Bowen's mount adapter. So any Bowen's mount, which I have my soft boxes and things are Bowen's mount. They're going to be able to go right on here. And you actually use this, connect it to it, and then line up the, uh, these rails, and now you've got your light. Okay, pretty, pretty basic functionality right there. Okay, we have another bag. This has our light stand mount on it. And again, really nice build quality on this. Big, chunky metal stuff. Very impressed with this. And we're gonna slide this into the bottom. And over here, we'll just Tighten that up. Okay, we're good to go. Uh, just as a note for, for some of you that will ask, there is no umbrella mount on here. Not on the Bones mount, not anywhere. There's no way to mount an umbrella on here. Not a showstopper, just, just saying. The power cord, and this is interesting, there, there's two of them. And I haven't figured out why there's two power cords yet. So we'll, we'll work on that. So this looks almost the exact same size as my MacBook Pro uh, power brick, but the cable is permanently attached to it. And the cord, which actually is a USB-C style end on it, and you have a quite a long cord. Now, if you've watched a lot of my light review videos, 
One of my biggest complaints, because most of them just use a standard off the shelf power supply, is the length of the cord, and you always have the main power brick suspended in midair. And that's just, it's kludgy, I don't like it, but here the power brick is where it plugs in to the outlet, USB-C on the other end, nice long cable, nothing, no weight is being suspended in the air. So, gotta love that. Now let's take a look at the back here. We have our USB port for that, we have power, a set, rate, EFF, which is for effects, CCT, which is our color temperature, and we have dials that are push button, you push them in, and they just rock back and forth. They don't spin, they just, they rock. So, there's that. Okay, now I'm going to take this adapter off. And the reason why I have two of these lights is for a very unique feature that they have available to them. Boom. I can instantly have two lights, four lights, eight lights, 20 lights, whatever. You know, I can just bunch these lights together and create a larger or more powerful light source. That is definitely a unique feature that I haven't seen in anything else. And when you're dealing with smaller lights, these 60 watt type lights, often one light is not enough. You need more lights. So being able to put multiple lights together is really, really handy. The downside there is, well, you're not going to put the Bowens mount on there. That's not going to, that's not going to work at all. So small problem when it comes to that particular bit of functionality. Now, the reflector, I get, doesn't friction on here or anything. So you're left with bare lights. So in this configuration, you're either just going to create a larger light source with multiple lights, or you can put some other modifier in front of them, um, some kind of screen or, or something to diffuse the light if you need to. So cool feature, being able to put multiple lights together. In reality, uh, you know, you do lose some functionality with being able to use different types of modifiers. So little trade off there, but for the size, I don't think that's really a big deal. The thing is, how well do these work? Well, we're gonna have to power them up and find out. All right, well, let's make some space here. We've got our light. We've got it connected into its nice long power cord. Absolutely love that. And I'll hold down the power button until it turns on. Okay. Oh, this thing is bright, really bright. So right now it's at 100%. So if I hold down the power, the top rocker switch, it's just gonna go in like 10% increments. If I just barely touch it and just rock it up, I can get it to go in 1% in increments. So, oh, 75 is way bright on this thing. So I'm gonna take it down to 20% so it's a little more usable. Now by the default out of the box, it was at 2700 Kelvin. So I'm gonna hold that up and we'll take it up to 5600 K. Now we have a nice daylight balance light to go along with the rest of the lights here. Seems like it's working quite well. Now, you do have the controls on the back here, and they work. Don't get me wrong, they work. I think they take a little bit of getting used to. You, you tap them and then adjust it, and then depending on whether you hold it or whether you just kind of tap it, you can easily adjust the power. And if you notice, like, I'll, uh, 
I'll crank this thing up to 100%. And you can go 0, 25, 50, 75, 100 just by quickly tapping it. So that's 100, and I'm going to drop to 25. And you see it just gradually drops. It's not just this blam instant. So you can adjust these on the fly, which is pretty nice. Now, I haven't really played around with different frame rates and things to see if I get flickering when that happens, but we'll, uh, we'll keep playing with them. Now, while the controls are on the back, and like I said, they work, they're fine, they have an app called Colbar Studio. And I'm actually gonna grab a, a light stand here so that I can have my hands free. Now, the app is, it may not be the most intuitive app right off the top, but once you start playing around with it, it it's actually not too bad. Let's see here, we'll, uh, once you have the app connected, I think it makes controlling the lights a whole lot easier. Now, I've got it pointed back here at the wall so we can see the changes here. Right now, it is at 50%. Okay, well, you have to actually like adjust it once and then it starts working. So that's 85%, we'll drop it down. You see it's a nice kind of fade down, which is really nice. We can do the intensity, we can do the color temperature, make it nice and cool, make it nice and warm. I'll go right to 5600. Boom. Now rate, rate is going to start flashing and flickering. So don't really want that right now. So I'm going to turn that back off. I got to turn flash back off. There we go. And we'll just go to white. I can go to my gel, tungsten, color temperature, and we have effects. Under effects, bonfire, flash, candlelight. So for just being a standard light, it's not an RGB light. It can do color temperature range and that's it. Really having special effects to me just isn't going to be that overly useful. I and mean, this is the faulty bulb, you know, very common. And it's just going to flicker on and off once in a while. So everything is going to be some combination of flashing. Which, I mean, if you want to simulate lightning or something outside, okay, that could do it. A bonfire, okay, that, that one would work pretty good. Uh, candlelight, pulsing. So there's not a lot because you don't have all the RGB colors to work with. But we'll go back to white here. And so the app is pretty good. There's always room for improvement in an app, but for the most part, it works. And for a basic light, which is what this is, I think it works fine. And I think it's easier to control things with the app than it is with the controls on the back. And that's just typical of anything that's gonna have different controls on it of varying quality and things. Trying to get something that really works well as an interface is gonna be a little tricky. Having a good app can make the difference between a crappy light and a good light. So the next thing is gonna be, let's, uh, let's put them on. Let's replace the lights we have here with these. See what kind of results we get. Okay, so over here, I've got one of the lights inside of a 30-inch softbox, the way I normally have my other light. And over here, I have it bare bulb and turned down. So nice, easy lighting, very affordable. These lights are $149 a piece. So definitely want to point that out. Now I'm going to see if I can get back in the app, and I have both of the lights set up here, which is nice. And I'm gonna 
adjust this one to 5600. Ooh, really bright, really bright. Take that one down to about, oh. Accidentally hit the wrong key. I'm gonna turn that one down to about 30% and turn the color temperature to 5600. Okay, nice adjustment over there. I'll go back, grab the other light, and I'll switch that one to 5600. Now, if you noticed, there was a color shift. And even though I already had it set up, it, as soon as the app connects, it goes to some app defaults. So I'm gonna crank this one up to 100%. All right, kind of liking the ease of use of this. Now what I, I can't do that I, oh, I can. Now I can, in the app, I can rename the lights. So I can have my primary, primary, secondary, whatever, however I want to do it. And you can group the lights together. So they have a radio system that will allow you to combine them. So you only make one adjustment and it goes to all of them. So that's kind of a handy feature there as well. So like I said, fairly basic lights, but I, I kind of like the way it works and being able to create these scenes on my phone. So if I had different setups for different situations that I used all the time, I could just recreate those scenes and pretty much go to town pretty, pretty easily, I gotta say. The bag itself is pretty nice. Inside uh, the packet here, there's also a shoulder strap to make carrying them around easy enough. This is nice and padded, giving you some protection when you're hauling them around. So it's a mix for a really small, portable lighting system that works pretty darn well. And the fact that it's Bowens compatible, well, that's a big win. Now these small little diffusers, or I mean, uh, not diffusers, these little uh, cones here, I mean, they're, they're small, but they're gonna really focus the light pretty nicely. They get a nice texture in here to help push that light out. And I'm just kind of been going through, making sure like I've understood the different things about the product here. Uh, again, the Bluetooth control. Oh, let's talk about the fan. The fans on these things are super quiet. I mean, I cannot hear them. On some of the other lights, I can hear them. They're not picked up on the microphone, but I can just hear a whisper of them. These, I don't hear at all. And there's a smart mode, which will adjust the fan speed to the internal detected temperature. That's normal. That's, that's what I have them on. And maybe the fan hasn't come on, I'm not sure, but I sure don't hear anything. And then there's quiet mode that keeps it running at a low speed for minimum noise. Overheating protection will be activated. If the temperature is too high, then it'll shut off. You have your groups, like I mentioned, the radio system in there, and you have a repeater function, then uh, that's the one that is gonna be kind of the master. Uh, product overheat alarm icon. Um, so yeah, I'm just kind of double checking, making sure I understand everything about these. Like I said, it's, it's pretty simple. Let's talk specs. I got the spec sheet right here. Um, a CRI of 97 plus, color temperature range of 2700 to 6500. The beam angle is 120 degrees or around 10 degrees with the reflector. The output power is greater than 60 watts. Um, cooling mode, smart or quiet connector. Uh, type C is, which is actually power delivery three point, uh, power delivery three, which is 20 volts at four amps. And the body's aluminum alloy and ABS plastic. Uh, weight on these things is uh, 550 grams, so pretty lightweight, and operating range of negative 10 to 50 degrees Celsius. So what do I think and who are these for? 
Well, I think Colbar has really nailed this small light market with these. Uh, there's also a CL100, and I've seen some reviews on that with people just raving about how insanely bright they are. These, for 60 watts, quite bright as well. Uh, so for that, and the price point of $149 a piece, certainly puts them into the budget price category. But when you compare it to some of the other lights that I have, and that I've even reviewed lately, I think you're getting a really, really nice product here. The aluminum shell, the ease of use, the app that works pretty well, the power output, the lightweight, the really nice padded carrying case. This is a fantastic value. So I would say these are definitely worth checking out. If you're looking for something in this 60 watt price point that's really gonna deliver on power, gonna deliver on light, it's gonna deliver on light quality and give you some great functionality, I don't think you can go wrong with these. I'm very, very impressed. I think these are gonna be a staple of the studio down here, just because they're small, lightweight, they're easy to move around, they work with my existing modifiers, and I don't hear them. So the fact that they are, to me, dead silent, huge win. So I'm gonna give these a big A plus uh, recommendation. Some of these are definitely some of the best lights that I have seen come across my desk in a while. Highly recommend them. So be sure and check them out. I'll put a link in the description below as well as the URL right here on the screen. Make you find them easy. But yeah, CL60, it's a big win for me. So thanks for watching everybody. This has been Kerry with Filmmaker Central with the Colbar CL60. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.